I have spent the vast majority of my time in Diablo playing one single class. And if you guys are familiar at all with my channel, you are well aware that I am speaking about the one and only Druid. I have played almost every single Druid build that is even <laughs> remotely viable, and even some that fall into, well, meme category. I'm looking at you, werewolf companions, you could have been so damn cool. In fact, I easily have spent over hundreds of millions of gold respecking and testing things. I wanted to talk about some strengths and weaknesses of these builds and how they stack up against each other. Just because I haven't made a dedicated guide to something doesn't mean I haven't tested it or played it, nor does it mean that the build isn't good or bad. Sometimes the build just doesn't fit my play style like the original chaotic and frantic landslide druid build. One further disclaimer that I think needs to be mentioned before we move into the video. There are countless reasons someone may choose to run a build, but I want to touch on just a few of the main ones that will probably brought, be brought up. Before we delve into the video, it's crucial to address a few points. Firstly, the ability to clear Nightmare 100 dungeons or defeat Uber Lilith does not solely determine a build's superiority or its overall viability. Additionally, just because a specific build may seem stronger than others, it doesn't invalidate alternative playstyles at the high end of endgame. If that were the case, everybody would just be playing Wolf Nato Druid. Remember, diversity and the individual preferences are key to the gaming experience as a whole. However, do note that the Druid class heavily relies on specific uniques, which I will consider when reviewing these builds. Keep in mind that most builds discussed here make use of best in slot gear, including the uniques. And speaking of best in slot, Skytech Gaming, Intel, and Signal RGB got you covered, coming together to bring you this Diablo 4 custom inspired PC. The swirling potions inside react to your health and resources in real time. This is made possible by the Signal RGB app, which syncs RGB devices from any brand to bring you a cohesive lighting experience. The Skytech team designed and 3D printed this custom PC with performance cooling in mind. This hand painted chest contains the 13th gen Intel 13600K and the RTX 4070, giving you all the legendary hardware you need to defeat Lilith and save Sanctuary. To enter this giveaway, click the link in the video description below and pinned to my top comment. This is a great opportunity for anybody trying to get best in slot gear in real life, and I highly recommend giving the link a click. And good luck to everybody, and thank you for Skytech, Intel, and Signal RGB for sponsoring this video. Good luck, everybody. With everything else out of the way, let's jump into the video and start discussing these damn druid builds. First, we have a personal favorite of mine, and that is Lightning Werewolf Druid. This build is the epitome of press one button and watch the entire room explode. Seriously, you walk into any room, hold down right click, and boom, room cleared. Single target damage can be lacking at times, but with the button click method, which is discussed in the video that I will link above right now, there is a workaround for it, and nothing should really give you any problems till around Nightmare Dungeon 55 plus. The build is easy to play from the beginning and will only get stronger with time once you get things like the Tempest Roar and start filling out your Paragon Tree for more spirit generation. However, while leveling this build, you can get spirit starved quite quickly. Druid is known for that. Some of the other pros to this build is it is one of the only true ranged druid classes, which means you can stay further away from the enemies than any other druid build in the game. With that being said, it does require you to stand still to do damage, and most of the time this will not be a problem. Once you get into the late game, being one shot while casting Lightning Storm is a bit of the pain in the ass, I must say. Lastly, although damage is fine without using Grizzly Rage slash the Dire aspect, you will definitely feel the loss of DPS as you start pushing higher content. You need to make sure and manage that for tougher fights, your Grizzly Rage is up as much as possible. This also provides you with Infinite Unstoppable, which really helps your survivability. All in all, this is my current favorite build. I use it to help people get through the game. The AoE is in incredible and allows you to just clear rooms and dungeons in literal minutes. I really love this build. It is fantastic. Next up, Wolf Nato. This is probably the best druid build in the entire game has been covered on every single YouTube channel to ever exist. It has insane clear speeds, insane movement speed and survivability, and absolutely ridiculous single target damage. However, this is not a build you will be able to run early into your druid experience, so it definitely loses some points for that as it takes the most amount of high-end, high-rolled gear and aspects to really get moving. 
needing, you guessed it, Tempest Roar, and the Tornado Seeks target's aspect both to drop early enough into a playthrough to even feel remotely viable. In general, the playstyle is hold right click throughout dozens upon dozens of tornadoes that seek your foes and watch as literally the entire room or boss just melts. There are really no cons with this build, it literally does everything you can ask from a high level build in Endgame of Diablo 4. It is easily the most covered build on YouTube as I said and absolutely destroys anything that you throw at it. It is one of the few non-bug druid builds that can reasonably clear tier 100 dungeons, albeit in a lengthy amount of time. And if you are able to get this build online and going early enough, nothing but the absolute toughest stuff in the game will stand in your way. Wolfnado Druid is a fantastic playstyle, and it's a ton of fun to play just seeing giant numbers pop up over and over and over again. This build is a lot of fun, I just never covered it on my channel because everyone else did. If I add some personal uh, conjecture to this, then I would say that I personally don't love the Wolfnado build. It, it's feedback, it's feel just seems a little off to me, something seems to be missing. Maybe the developers didn't really mean for this to become such a dominant playstyle and most likely will receive some nerfs in season one, but the build itself just feels awkward to me. There is no visual cue really, there's really no sound effect when using tornadoes and they clutter your entire screen as you're using them. It is not my favorite build, but it is a damn good one. Now let's discuss the OG of Druid builds, Pulverize, which has earned its status for good reason. This build offers high damage output, phenomenal map clearing speed, and an incredible array of tankiness, thanks to its constant uptime for fortify and multiple ways to become unstoppable. Moreover, Pulverize boasts impressive scaling potential mainly due to its synergistic power of Grizzly Rage. Compared to many other builds, Pulverize is relatively easier to assemble as it does not heavily rely on the super rare Tempest Roar. However, be aware that it does place significant strain on your spirit reserves, especially during the leveling process. I personally do not recommend using Pulverize as a leveling build, as it is such an intensive spirit build that you basically only get to use three Pulverizes before you, having, before you have to start autoing the enemy to regain some of your spirit. I, I have said this in multiple videos that Pulverize, although fantastic late game, is not something I would really recommend leveling with. However, once you start playing on World Tier 3 and World Tier 4 and getting Sacred and Ancestral drops with higher percentage ranges of lucky hit, resource generation, and things like this, this is when the Pulverize build really starts to turn up a notch. I personally switched to Pulverize at level 48 and found immense success, eventually reaching level 100 before even thinking about respecking. It is a straightforward playstyle, raw destructive force, and relatively accessible gear requirements make Pulverize an excellent choice for pushing higher level Nightmare Dungeons while farming for your other uniques such as Tempest Roar or Best in Slot items. On a personal note, I absolutely love this build. If you know me from Outriders, I played Devastator and covered Devastator mainly, and the playstyle is almost exactly the same. This does lose some points for being a more boring playstyle, as you really are just spamming one ability the entire time, because you are so tanky that you don't really need to keep up your defensive aspects such as Bulwark or Cyclone Armor. You have Trample to get out of any kind of sticky situation. The build absolutely wrecks. It is a ton of fun to play. It feels great. The feedback loop is amazing. I really loved leveling as this build, and I might do it again depending on what kind of new aspects we get for Druid. Next, let's talk about the new build on the block, and my pick for the best leveling build for Druid, Shred. Shred as of late has gotten a lot of traction because it got a significant buff from the previous patch about two weeks ago. And with that, new builds started to pop up and start to do some incredible damage. With absolutely insane movement speed and clear speed, the fastest probably in the entire game, Shred is a build that must be tried and experienced. I have yet to experience a build that felt this unique to play, and this is probably the closest thing we have to an in-game build that is on the same clear speed as something from Path of Exile. Constant uptime on Grizzly Rage, amazing spirit sustained due to legendary nodes and Tempest Roar, amazing use of Hurricane to stack your damage to the moon, this build seriously has everything you would want from a nightmare dungeon farming build. However, one thing to note is its single target boss damage can be lacking. 
depending on how high you're pushing on your nightmare tiers. Since it does use Grizzly Rage to scale its damage, having only one enemy to do that with makes it slightly more difficult, but not bad by any means. It is, however, another build that relies on two uniques, that being Tempest Roar, although playable without it, and Waxing Gibbous. However, once this build comes online, you will be one-shotting giant packs of enemies and teleporting to the next one before you can actually blink. The build is literally that quick. Also, as I said, this is my pick for early or new druids, as every single important aspect can be farmed from the first act by just clearing dungeons, and the shred ability will carry you through the majority of the campaign. Once this build comes online, wish your friends good luck keeping up with you as you destroy nightmare dungeons in literal minutes, and since this isn't as heavily reliant on good gear to feel good, I really do recommend it as a starter build. You can play this build with literally anything you find and you will be able to keep up all the way to world tier three until you, until you start refining your gear to make this feel amazing. But just having the best in slot that you happen to find on the floor is good enough to use shred while leveling. As you guys can see, there are a ton of viable builds that Druid can play. In fact, he probably has the most diverse skill set in the entire game and there's even more builds to cover but i just want to add these three more builds in a little honorable mention section before we go and we rate these builds one on one against each other so first up is landslide slash the build i made pulver slide which i will link above right now if you want to check it out this build is super new player friendly with a multitude of interchangeable play styles and we will go over them quickly you can have a sporadic, frantic build using Nature Fury to reset your cooldowns, specifically Trample, uh, and be able to use Trample with the two key aspects that allow you for a ton of AoE damage, which is the Trample uses Landslide, and then you double your Landslide. Or you can play the build featured on this channel and combine it with Pulverize to allow for more targeted DPS and less cooldown. The cool thing about both these builds is that they work just fine without any uniques at all and are easily playable with one hand slash offhand weapons, allowing for cooldown and spirit consumption problems to be alleviated. However, both of these builds tend to fall off a bit at the later stages of endgame since their damage is difficult to target and you will have problems killing tankier single enemies like bosses. However, if you want to play bear and I and don't like the spirit consumption issues of pulverize, I would recommend a build like this. Link to my build down in the description below. The next one we're going to talk about is the claw slash crone unique build, crone staff build. And the claw crone build is, in my opinion, a little lackluster. It does OK damage. It's pretty tanky due to certain skills and boons and can clear most high end dungeons. However, it severely falls off comparing it to its other close range brothers, such as Tornado and Shred. In my opinion, I wouldn't play this on a normal basis as there are just better builds in the game that have the exact same playstyle and much better results. However, if you happen to find a Staff of the Crone early into your run, switching to a Claw build as you go will probably be beneficial, so keep that in mind. This build is fun because the attack speed is through the roof, but like I said, you can do better with the other close range builds. And lastly, the Bulwark build. This is one that I haven't personally tried. The only one on this list that I personally did not make. And it's only getting an honorable mention because as far as I am aware, again, from what I can find out, it is currently taking advantage of two bugs that allow it to clear tier 100 dungeons. You would think a build that can clear tier 100 dungeon should get higher than an honorable mention spot. But like I said, I think it can only do that because it's taking advantage of two bugs that are currently in the game. So the idea of the build is to cast Earthen Bulwark and have the explosion from Bulwark kill the enemies. And as far as I understand, the explosion is scaling with Nightmare Dungeon level. So it is scaling way harder than intended. You may have seen 100 million plus damage just from a defensive skill. Hitting for hundreds of millions of damage, you combine this with Nature's Fury and is constantly off cooldown, allowing insane damage, survivability, and uptime. The second bug, and I'm less sure on this one, is that it is being cast twice due to Staff of Crone's interaction with the Claw perk that allows you to attack twice. If these get fixed, the build will probably fall into obscurity. I will link a video to a guide down below if you want to check it out in case it doesn't get fixed. And these three builds, again, work perfectly fine and you can play them as much as you want. But personal opinion here, the top four builds kind of outweigh them, except for maybe 
claw claw and crone and the pulver slide landslide as they are just so much easier each to other. gear for so now i just kind of wanted to rank these builds quickly next to each other in an all druid one-on-one -on -one battle of the best build in the entire game so this is in no particular order and again this is just my opinion uh but with over like 400 hours on druid then uh i feel like i have an, somewhat of an idea of how well these builds uh do perform in all matters of the game so we're gonna just start off here in order and we're gonna go with trample slide so trample slide slash pulver slide uh this build is fantastic for new players as i said it can carry you all the way to the super late game uh it is much better for a non-spirit starved build and i really do enjoy this play style especially this pulver slide one where it's not as frantic and you can target some more damage uh this one's easy to get online all you need is uh just some aspects you don't really need any uniques at all so i'm gonna give this a solid b and like a high b so like a b plus possibly a just for its ease of use that you can play uh, anywhere in the game next up we have bulwark the bulwark build i'm gonna give this a c tier because like i said it is currently bugged and i'm not sure if this would even be viable later on in the game but as of right now it is completely fine to play it does take some uniques to get online such as the crone staff uh, there are versions that you can play without it but they are vastly less superior than the crone staff version so if you don't have that unique you can't find it or if this play style just doesn't suit you which is definitely a thing for me uh, i wouldn't really recommend this build but it is fine to play if you enjoy that play style next up we're gonna go claw and that is also going to go into c tier like i said in the beginning of the or the ma vast majority of this video is this build is fine and it if you happen to get a crone staff earlier on in the game it can carry you pretty well because there's so many plus stats on claw with this build and all you really need to get it online to do some decent damage is more attack speed but everything late game just gets done better by its rival builds so claw is fine the crone staff build is fine just not my favorite then here we have wolf nato this is going in obviously s tier it is hands down the best druid build in the entire game it most likely will receive some nerfs so we will have to revisit this after season one drops in about six days but as of right now if you are leveling druid and you're just getting there and you just got the right items to drop then this is the absolute best build for druid in the game it's single target damage is literally incredible it is tanky as all hell it has no spirit issues thanks to tempest roar and legendary nodes uh it is a fantastic build i highly recommend it it's a ton of fun to play it's not my personal favorite but i can't knock what it can actually do shred i'm gonna put this at a this is probably a plus uh mainly because just wolf nato is slightly better because it does more things specifically single target damage uh except you can run a version of shred that does have in incredible single target damage the only issue with that build is that it's kind of meant simply to kill uber lilith it literally is a brand new build that came out like two days ago uh and that does have a lot of single target damage but then it's less of a mapping build i didn't watch the whole guy's video on it but shred in general if you just play it as a nightmare dungeon farming build it does do work it is incredibly fast it is incredibly fun to play uh it sounds great really highly recommend this one uh it is the new kid on the block and i like it a lot a build you probably haven't tried with druid and i highly highly recommend it is lightning storm you want to talk about mapping speed clearing entire dungeons and keeping your friends safe maybe your friends are a little low level and you're trying to get them some you know levels and you're playing with them this is the build to do because you can attack enemies from literal screens away it is one of the only builds that you can off screen enemies with a druid and if they're if your friend or something like that is above you like a tile set above you you can literally cast lightning storm and it's a giant aoe into that area so it is a fantastic build to play not many people are playing it i hear it's pretty damn decent in pvp that's not really my space to know but uh, i really do enjoy this build highly recommend try it out plus it's decent for leveling because you really don't need any aspects to really start getting it online except maybe one or two not so rare ones so keep that in mind pulverize also going into in my opinion a tier but like the bottom of a tier pulverize you have to understand was what what everybody was building at the beginning of their druid playstyles. nobody had tempest roars nobody was building into 
uh, werewolves can now throw tornadoes. No, they can do lightning storm. Those bills weren't invented yet. And for that reason, I think pulverized deserves a solid spot on this list because it is what carried most people to the end game who played Druid. Then they switched once they got the Tempest Order drop because the build variations for Werewolf Druid are slight. You don't need to respec at all, really, to build all these Druid Wolf builds, but from going from bear to wolf, it's a huge process to respec everything. But that Druid build, the Pulverize build, got the vast majority of late game players to that late game point where they finally respec once they got the perfect aspects to drop. Because in seriousness, Wolf builds are just better than bear build builds at the moment. Bear builds do have more survivability, more ways to have unstoppable, but they kind of hit this cap where you can't really push too much higher on a pulverized build. Yes, people have cleared Nightmare Lilith with a pulverized build, but it's a pain in the butt to do. There are other builds that do it faster. So even though it can do every piece of content in the game for the vast majority of it, it still does get outshined by most werewolf builds. Then we have companions. Uh, if there was an F tier on this list, we would definitely stick them in F tier. Uh, this build is kind of what put me behind the curve on content creation for Druid. At the beginning, at the end of the game, the beginning of the end of the game, I had 18 million gold or something to respec. I respect into companions. The first thing I put a poll up on my channel and everything and it was terrible it was so bad in fact i could not even clear regular tier 4 open world let alone dungeons they need to rework companions except for poison creeper so hard on druid they are literally useless abilities wolves do no damage they die almost instantaneously ravens the circle that they make is so small that enemies just literally walk out of them instantaneously druid doesn't have that kind of crowd control where you can cc a target in that little circle for more than a second ravens werewolves companions really need a bit of a rework on this entire thing and then lastly here just an honorable mention is for the grizzly rage ability i'm going to put this into s tier as well because the vast vast majority of these builds not every single one of them but the vast majority of these builds are only viable because of this ultimate perk this ultimate perk makes wolf nato better shred better lightning storm better pulverize better trample slide better it literally this entire list claw better i don't know about earthen bulwark like i said i never played it and it doesn't touch companions but that's like seven of the top five build, top 10 builds for Druid that are only really viable because of this one ultimate perk. And that is really it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you agree with my rankings? Have you played any of these builds? Have you played all of these builds? What build do you plan on doing on season one, which comes out in about seven days? I'm curious to hear what you guys' opinions are. I really, really am. I've played so many of these builds that I think I have a pretty good understanding about where they lie here. Thank you once again for Signal RGB and Intel for sponsoring this video. You guys can click the link down in the description below and pinned in my top comment for a chance to win a brand new 4070 powered PC that looks like a chest from Diablo 4. It's really, really cool. And thank you guys so much for sponsoring this. And lastly, if you guys want to check me out, I'll be live at twitch.tv slash rounded tic tac throughout the week. We would love to see you come stop by, say what's up, and let me know what you think about this video. Really looking forward to season one. Uh, it's not far away, and I'm really excited to try out some new builds. I think I'm going to stick with Druid again and just see how far we get. Thank you guys so much. I will see you on the next one. Tic tac out.